I was probably very confused when Philemon approached me the following night, since I was called since I called to him saying, What did you do, O Philemon? What fires have you kindled? What have you broken asunder? Does the wheel of creation stand still? But he answered and said, Everything is running its usual course, and nothing has happened, and yet a sweet and indescribable mystery has taken place. I stepped out of the whirling circle. What's that? I exclaimed. Your words move my lips. Your voice sounds from my ears. Your eyes see me from within. Truly, you are a magician. You stepped out from the whirling circle. What confusion? Are you I? Am I you? Did I not feel as if the wheel of creation was standing still? And yet you say that you have stepped out of the whirling circle. I am truly bound to the wheel. I feel the rushing swaying of it, and yet the wheel of creation also stands still for me. What did you do, Father? Teach me. Then Philemon said, I stepped onto what is solid and took it with me and saved it from the wave surge, from the cycle of births, from the revolving wheel of endless happening. It has been still. The dead have received the folly of the teaching. They have been blinded by truth and see by mistake. They have recognized, felt, and regretted it. They will come again and will humbly inquire, since what they rejected will be most valuable to them. I wanted to question Philemon, since the riddle distressed me, but he had already touched the earth and disappeared, and the darkness of the night was silence and did not answer me, and my soul stood silently shaking her head and did not know what to say about the mystery that Philemon had indicated and not given away. Another day passed, and the seventh night fell and the dead came again, this time with pitiful gestures, and said, We forgot to mention one thing that we would, li that we would like you to teach us about men. And Philemon stepped before me and began to speak, and this is the seventh sermon of the dead. Man is a gateway through which you pass from the outer world of gods, daemons, and souls into the inner world, out of the greater and into the smaller world small and inane is man already he is behind you and once again you find yourselves in endless space in the smaller or inner infinity at a measurable distance a lonely star stands in the zenith this is the one god of this one man this is his world his pleroma his divinity in this world man is abraxas the creator and destroyer of his own world this star is the god and the goal of man. This is his one guiding god. In him man goes to his rest. Towards him goes the long journey of the soul after death. In him everything that man withdraws from the greater world shines resplendently. To this one god man shall pray. Prayer increases the light of the star. It throws a bridge across death. It prepares life for the smaller world and assuages the hopeless desires of the greater. When the greater world turns cold, the star shines. Nothing stands between man and his one God so long as man can turn away his eyes from the flaming spectacle of Abraxas. Man here, God there. Weakness and nothingness here, internally creative power there. Here nothing but darkness and clammy cold there, total sun. But when Philemon had finished, the dead remained silent. Heaviness fell from them, and they ascended like smoke above the shepherd's fire, who watches over his flock by night. But I turned to Philemon and said, Illustrious one, you teach that man is a gateway, a gateway through which the procession of God passes, through which the streams of life flows, through which the entire future streams into the endlessness of the past? Philemon answered, saying, these dead believed in transformation and development of man. They were conceived of human nothingness and transitoriness. Nothing was clearer to them than this, and yet they know that man even creates its gods, and so they know the gods were of no use. Therefore they had to learn what they did not know, that man is a gateway through which crowds the train of God through which crowds the train of gods and the coming and passing of all times. He does not know it, does not create it, does not suffer it, since he is the being, the sole being, since he is the moment of the world, the eternal moment. Whoever recognizes this time stops, this stops being flame, he becomes smoke and ashes. He lasts, and his transitoriness is over, he has become someone who is. 
You dreamed of the flame as if it were life, but life is duration. The flame dies away. I carried that over. I saved it from the fire. That is the sun of the fire flower. You saw that in me. I myself am of the eternal fire of light, but I am the one who saved it for you, the black and golden seed and, and its blue starlight. You, eternal being, what is length and brevity? What is the moment and eternal duration? You, being, are eternal in each moment. What is time? Time is the fire that flares up, consumes, and dies down. I saved being from time, redeemed it from the fires of time and the darkness of time from God's and devils. But I said to him, Illustrious one, when will you give me the dark and golden treasure and its blue starlight? Philemon replied, When you have surrendered everything that wants to burn to the holy flame. And as Philemon spoke these words, a dark form with golden eyes approached me from the shadows of the night. I was startled and cried, Are you enemy? Who are you? Where do you come from? I have never seen you before. Speak. What do you want? The dark one answered, saying, I come from afar. I come from the east and follow the shining fire that precedes me. Philemon, I am not your enemy. I am a stranger to you. My skin is dark and my eyes shine golden. What do you bring? I asked fearfully. I bring abstinence. Abstinence from human joy and suffering. Compassion leads to alienation. Pity, but no compassion. Pity for the world and the will held in check towards the other. Pity remains misunderstood. Therefore, it works. Far from longing, no, no fear. Far from love, love the whole. I looked at him fearfully and said, Why are you as dark as the earth of, of the fields and as black as iron? I'm afraid of you. Such pain. What have you done to me? You may call me death, death that rose with the sun. I come with quiet pain and long peace. I lay the cover of protection on you. In the midst of life begins death. I lay cover upon cover upon you so that your warmth will never cease. You bring grief and despair, I answered. I want to be among men. But he said, you will go to men as one veiled. Your light shines at night. Your solar nature departs from you and your stellar nature begins. You are cruel, I sighed. The simple is cruel. It does not unite with the manifold. With these words, the mysterious dark one vanished. But Philemon regarded me with a serious and questioning look. Did you take a proper look at him, my son? He said, you will be hearing from him. But come now, so that I can fulfill what the Dark One prophesied for you. And as he spoke this wor these words, he touched my eyes and opened my gaze and showed me the immeasurable mystery. And I looked for a long time until I could grasp it. But what did I see? I saw the night, I saw the dark earth, and above this the sky stood gleaming in the brilliance of countless stars. And I saw the sky had the form of a woman, and sevenfold was her mantle of stars, and it completely covered her. And when I beheld it, Philemon said, Mother, you who stand in the higher circle, a nameless one who shrouds me and him and protects me and him from the gods, he wants to become your child. May you accept his birth. May you renew him. I separate myself from him. The cold is growing, glowing, and its, and its star blazes brighter. He needs the bond of childhood. You gave birth to the godly serpent. You released it from the pangs of birth. Take this man to the abode of the sun. He needs the mother. A voice came from afar, and it was like a falling star. I cannot take him as a child. He must cleanse himself first. Philemon said, What is his impurity? But the voice said, It is the commingling. He contains human suffering and joy. He shall remain secluded until abstinence is complete, and he is freed from the commingling with men. Then shall he be taken as a child. In this moment my vision ended, and Philemon went away, and I was alone, and I remained apart as I had been told. But in the fourth night I saw a strange form, a man wearing a long coat and turban. His eyes shone cleverly and kindly like a wise doctor's. He approached me and said, I speak to you of joy. But I answered, you want to speak to me of joy? I bleed from the thousandfold wounds of men. He replied, I bring healing. Women taught me this art. They know how to heal sick children. Do your wounds burn you? Healing is at hand. Give ear to good counsel and do not be incensed. I retorted, What do you want? To tempt me? Mock me? What are you thinking? He interrupted. I bring you the bliss of paradise, the healing fire, the love of women. Are you thinking, I asked, of the descent into the frog swamp? 
the dissolution and the many, the scattering, the dismembering. But as I spoke, the old man turned into Philemon, and I saw that he was the magician who was tempting me. But Philemon continued, You have not yet experienced the dismembering. You should be blown apart and shredded and scattered to the winds. Men are preparing for the last supper with you. But what will remain of me, I cried, nothing but your shadow. You will be a river that pours forth over the land. It seeks every valley and streams towards the depths. I asked, full of grief, but where is my unique? But where will my uniqueness remain? You will steal it from yourself, Philemon replied. You will hold the invisible realm in trembling hands. It lowers its roots into the gray darkness and mysteries of the earth and sends up branches covered in leaves into the golden air. Animals live in its branches. Men camp in its shade. Their murmuring arises from below. A thousand mile long disappointment is the juice of the tree. It will stay green for a long time. Silence abides in the treetop. Silence in its deep roots. I gathered from Philemon's words that I must remain true to love to cancel out the commingling that arises through unlived love. I understood that the commingling is a bondage that takes the place of voluntary devotion. Scattering or dismembering arises, as Philemon had taught me from voluntary devotion. It cancels out the commingling. Through voluntary devotion, I moved binding ties. Therefore, I had to remain true to love and devoted to it voluntarily. I suffer the dismembering and thus attain bonding with the great mumber, mother, with the great mother. That is the stellar nature, liberation from bondage to men and things. If I am bound to men and things, I can neither go on with my life to its destination, nor can I arrive at my very own and deepest nature, nor can death begin in me as a new life, since I can only fear death. I must therefore remain true to love, since how else can I arrive at the scattering and dissolution of bondage? How could I experience death other than through remaining true to love and willingly accepting the pain and all the suffering? As long as I do not voluntarily devote myself to the dismembering, a part of myself secretly remains with men and things and binds me to them, and thus I must, whether I want to or not, be a part of them mixed in with them to bound to them only fidelity to love and voluntary devotion to love enable this binding and mixing to be dissolved and led back to me that part of myself that secretly lay with men and things only thus does the light of the star grow only thus do i arrive at my stellar nature at my truest innermost self that simply and singly is it is difficult to remain true to love, since love stands above all sins. He who wants to remain true to love must also overcome sin. Nothing occurs more readily than failing to recognize that one is committing a sin. Overcoming sin for the sake of remaining true to love is difficult, so difficult that my feet hesitated to advance. When night fell, Philemon approached me in the earth-colored robe, holding a silver fish. Look, my son, he said, I was fishing and caught this fish. I bring it to you so that you may be comforted. And as I looked at him, astonished and questioningly, I saw that a shade stood in darkness at the door, bearing a robe of grandeur. His face was pale, and blood had flowed into the furrows of his brow. But Philemon knelt down, touched the earth, and said to the shade, My master and my brother, praised be your name. You did the greatest thing for us. Out of animals you made men. You gave your life for men to enable their healing. Your spirit was with us through an endlessly long time, and men still look to you and still ask you to take pity on them and beg for the mercy of God and the forgiveness of their sins through you. You do not tire of giving to men. I praise your divine patience. Are, you, are not men ungrateful? Does their cravings know no limits? Do they still make demands of you? They have received so much, yet still they are beggars. Behold, my master and my brother, they do not love me, but they long for you with greed, for they also crave their neighbor's possessions. They do not love their neighbor, but they want what is his. If they were fearful to their love, they would not be greedy. But whoever gives attracts desire. Should they not learn love, fidelity to love, freely willed devotion? But they demand and desire and beg from you and have learned no lesson from your awe-inspiring life. They have imitated it, but they have not lived their own lives the way you have lived yours. Your awe-inspiring life shows how everyone would have to take their own life into their own hands. 
faithful to their own essence and their own love. Have you not forgiven the adulteress? Did you not sit with the whores and the tax collectors? Did you not break the command of the Sabbath? You lived your own life, but men failed to do so. Instead, they pray to you and make demands on you and forever remind you that your work is incomplete. Yet your work would be completed if men managed to live their own lives without imitation. Men are still childish and forget gratitude, since they cannot say, Thanks be to you, our Lord, for the salvation you have brought us. We have taken into ourselves, given it a place in our hearts, and we have learned to carry on your work in ourselves on our own. Through your help, we have grown mature in continuing the work of redemption in us. Thanks to you, we have embraced your work. We grasped your redemptive teaching. We completed in ourselves what you had begun for us with bloody struggle. We are not ungrateful children who desire our parents' possessions. Thanks to you, our master, we will make the most of your talent and will not bury it in the earth and forever stretch out our hands helplessly and urge you to complete your work in us. We want you to take your troubles and your work upon ourselves so that your work may be completed and so that you may lay your weary, tired hands in your lap like the worker after a long day's hard burden. Blessed is the dead one who rests from the completion of his work. I wanted the people to address you in this way, but they have no love for you, my master and brother. They begrudge you the price of peace. They leave your work incomplete, eternally needing your pity and care. But my master and my brother, I believe you have completed your work, since the one who has given his life, his entire truth, all his love, his entire soul has completed his work. What one individual can do for man, you have done and accomplished and fulfilled. The time has come when each must do his own work of redemption. Mankind has grown older, and a new month has begun. When Philemon had finished, I looked up and saw that the place where the shade had stood was empty. I turned to Philemon and said, My father, you spoke of men. I am a man. Forgive me. But Philemon dissolved into darkness, and I decided to do what was required of me. I accepted all the joy and every torment of my nature and remained true to my love to suffer what comes everyone in their own way. And I stood alone and was afraid. And that concludes the seven sermons of the dead.